Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzle loading. Today we're continuing work on our CVA Hawkend kit. Last time we got all of the hardware set up and attached to the stock, so now we can start refining and cleaning up this stock a little bit to both be a little more aesthetically pleasing and get it ready for a stock finish. Our first step for this is going to be matching the hardware, like our butt plate here, to the wood stock. Looking at our butt plate here, I've talked about this uh, in the first episode uh, where we're going through and fitting this. Our, our butt plate is really long and that wouldn't be a problem except for the fact that we have some void in the casting here. So right here, while I could file this all away and, and make this match, we're gonna have a bit of a gap here um, because this butt plate is so mismatched for almost to the point where I wonder if this is not the butt plate for it, but the, the brass matches the rest of the brass for this kit. And this is something that unfortunately you see in, in a lot of these kits. So I'm gonna hold off on working on our butt plate area here. I'm gonna talk with uh, some other gunsmiths that I know and, and get some pointers. Because what I don't wanna do is start working on this and remove material to the point where I can't do a fix that could be recommended to me. Probably could have adjusted where the butt plate is screwed in just a touch to have this more centered, um, but we're still gonna have that void around here and I, I don't want that. So we're gonna pause on this section of the butt plate a little bit. Looking at our nose cap from the end here, you can see this mass of wood coming all the way around. We wanna clean that up and make that line up with both the nose cap casting and the stock itself. We're gonna leave a lot of this hardware attached to the stock as we file it. And that's gonna start us on the process of, of both mating these parts together. It's gonna to start our polishing process for parts like our nose cap here. Because we have a bit of material here to remove, I'm gonna be using this fairly rough, big flat file here. I like this because I can work and I want to work this entire four stock kind of all at once. And a big file like this makes that a little bit easier, makes it a little bit smoother. Uh, I'm not worried about this and the brass because this brass is pretty soft. In conjunction with this, as we get a little bit closer, I have this Nicholson flat smooth file and you can see there a little bit of variation between the texture of each of these. This one is much rougher and uh, will work fine. It's not gonna carve it up, it's not a rasp, but it is going to remove enough material in a timely manner that we aren't spending all day here. I'm starting out by rounding out kind of this corner down here. It's a very boxy stock as it comes. I don't want to spend too much time on that flat, on this underside here, because it's already pretty flat. I don't want to remove too much material there. I'm going to kind of start with that initial 90 there, kind of break that angle. And I'm softening up my cuts as I get back here to our side plate or our lock mortise because we're gonna work these a little bit, get those a little bit more established. I don't wanna take away too much wood there when I'm not thinking about that area necessarily. So I'll come over here to this side, just kind of create my stopping point. I'll sight down it, looking this way, kind of at it from the front, and I'll know when I start engaging and catching on this brass nose cap here, then I'm getting close and I need to slow down a little bit. What you don't want is to focus on one area here, like this nose cap, and just swoop this nose cap, you know, let me get my pencil here so it makes more sense. What you don't want to do is just work this area because you'll have a nice, sure, you'll have a nice curve there. So let's say this is your nose cap here. And say this is your stock. If you work just this front area here, you might have a nice angle, but it'll be a really short angle. And if you come back and say you're working that transition from your stock to your nose cap, and say you start it back here, you get a much more gradual much more elegant angle. I hope that makes sense. And in doing that, it just makes it a little bit sleeker, makes it a little bit nicer, and it makes it a little more in tune with some of the originals that you're gonna find out there. I like 
try to take some pride in what I'm doing and what I'm working on. Uh, if you are just looking for a tutorial on how to finish this so you can go hunt, you're going to probably want to skip around quite a bit in this series uh, because we're going to go into detail uh, like we have in my other series. No problem with that if you want to skip around. Um, this is going to kind of, we're going to work on this how I like to work on it. But I've changed my mind a little bit as I'm working on this. I've put the barrel back in. Uh, it's so short that it's a little difficult for me to get the angle right here in the shot. But now we can take a bit more of a look at this. With that center line or kind of rough center line I put in there, I kind of use that as a basis for my strokes. I'm trying to bring my angle right up to that center line. You can see here I start catching a little bit on that end grain there and I don't want to. I don't want to damage that end grain and maybe even split it. So as I'm starting to work out here towards the front, I want to come in and make sure that I'm stroking from this direction. Stroking in line with that rather than into it. There you can see right there I'm beginning to index and, and line up with our nose cap. And now that we're down to that space there, at least on this underside where our wood is matching our nose cap, I can start to work it here from the other side. And at that point, that's kind of where I'm going to stop with this file in that area. Now I can focus on a little bit more of the stock here, different areas, and make sure that I've got everything right. And along with this here, I can start to run my hand along the underside. Just make sure that I've got that same curve from that nose cap running back and blending into the stock. I can feel some flat spots in here. Come in there, buff those out. This isn't a, f a finished stage by any means. But we just want to take caution and, and take care on those areas. We want to look at it from different angles. Kind of work all around it. I mean, in school, talked about like, think of the, the stock here as like a composition. And if you're drawing or painting, you don't want to just fixate on one area. You want to focus on the entire composition here. And for right now, our workspace, our work area is this part of the comp the comp the <laughs> the, comp the composition, and uh, and we don't want to just focus in on this area and bring this to a total finish. So what we'll do is we'll continue to work this area with this file, and we'll start working the rest of the stock with this same file. So we finish everything kind of an equal stage all the way through. That's what I like to do. By no means is that what you have to do, or the only way to do the, this kind of work. As I was working on this, I wanted to remove the site so I could start working uh, on the stock here. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Initially, it looks like it's just dovetailed in, but it's actually dovetail. Uh, this kind of adapter or spacer is dovetailed in, and then our sight is screwed down to it. Kind of an interesting little thing. Probably a little remnant <laughs> of the 1980s and muzzle loading. So we're going to flip this back up on this side. And I'm going to work this face of our stock here, coming into our nose cap and our barrel. And I'm going to work right over our extension plates here. These are fine to be worked in the stock, and it's going to make all of this level up and, and nice and even. Being really gentle out here at the fore end with that end grain, and just kind of riding that in. Then as we come up here to our nose, I'm going to start angling my file so we have a nice slick curve around and into our barrel. I'm going to do the same thing with our nose cap. I want that to look nice and petite as it comes in to the barrel. Now, the Hawken rifle is, you know, a man's gun. It's a nice, thick, durable mountain gun. 
But when we look at and study photographs as much as we can and things, not to say that I'm a hawking expert by any means, but we still do see these traditional artistic values in the layout and presentation of these rifles. That's really what makes one look beautiful, I think, is when you have these little details. My goal is to bring this curve up and around, up and around from the bottom of the stock to line up and be nice and thin up here. I want this line here between the barrel and the stock, I want that stock to be like a sixteenth of an inch thick as it comes up and approaches this barrel and get wider as it comes around. That's just what I try to go for, it's what I like, it's what I've seen in, in other kits and other builds. Uh, and, and original pieces as well. And so that's what I'm doing. And I'm just going to run this curve just like this with my thumb and my hand just to identify any flat spots. So like right now, and you can see it here, there's a color difference right here there's a color difference in the wood and there's a there's a textural difference too because that's not really been touched by my file but in this area here has all been hit with that file except for this area here and we want to make sure that we have this mortise here that we want to you know work with down the road we don't want to damage that mortise at all but we want to make sure that we're not leaving marks and uh, an untouched wood here so I'm going to bring my file up, kind of like this. And this transition here between this mortise and, and this area, we will work and start working here soon. So this area here, it's hard to get everything in frame here. I'll try to zoom in as much as I can. This is what I'm talking about, this thickness of this stock as it comes into the barrel here. So this side is relatively untouched, and this is the side that we've been working. And I want this to come off of this mortise here, where our last lock bolt is, and I want that to gradually taper down until it matches up back here with our nose cap. So that's what we're working on. That's largely just a personal taste and personal preference. Um, you don't have to do that. You can do more and you can do less. That's just where I'm at. I'm going to switch on this brass to a little bit of a finer file here. I like working this nose cap. Um, the way I am now with the barrel in, especially this nose cap, because I was saying there that it's it's a little light as far as its attachment points go. Um, so I'm I'm only doing this with this barrel in because this offers an extreme amount of support. We have it clamped, and we have it clamped back here, so this can't really go anywhere. When I'm talking about it being clamped back here, I've just got a clamp back here acting uh, like our tang would be uh, because we don't have that tang bolt we're a little limited on what we can do um, but now we can I'm going to operate with this as if it was put together with that clamp in there so I'm doing my best to make nice even strokes here I don't want to do that and get into that barrel With my cut, I want to make sure that I'm running the entirety of the nose cap into that wood uh, to get that to blend and match. So 
So I've dinged the barrel a little bit there. I can buff that out. Um, this already has kind of a draw filed finish, but we're going to go through and, and really clean it up with some sandpaper. Okay. I think we're really pretty good now. I like where that's at. I'll come back here more into the stock. Make sure that we're nice and even all the way through. We don't want any bumps, any dramatic changes in here. going to come back here a little bit farther. Um, you'll notice that our extension plate here has a little variation uh, as far as how the light is refracting it and we will continue to work on that. Uh, right now I'm more focused on the shape of the stock here. I just want that to be nice and smooth. A little bit of a bump right in here. And really, for where we're at right now, I think that's going to be good uh, for this side. What I'm going to do now is off camera, we'll flip this over. We'll take a look at the other side, get it matched up so that it lines up well. And, uh, and then we'll be able to move on. To give you an idea a little bit of what we've done. This is how it looks on this side. You can see how thin we are here up at the top. See the, the fit and the lineup between our, our nose cap. And our stock here. We'll come here around the along the top and get this evened up so we don't have this dip back here uh, with our nose cap. But here's our side that we have not worked. We've worked this angle a little bit. We've d-squared this some. We've rounded it some. Uh, but the rest of this needs a little bit of work. So there's our finish. And I can see here looking at it. This is the benefit of looking at these things in different angles and at different angles is we have a bit of a bump right in here. I don't want that. I want it to be nice and even. So we'll work that area a little bit. We'll come in here and clean up this side. On our lock plate side here, I've got a lot of the wood on our four stock pretty well evened up as far as the nose cap and our extension plate here. I'm not quite to the thickness that I want along the barrel uh, on the upper side here, but I'm starting to uh, get to the point where I need to be working this lock plate mortise so that I can keep all of this nice and even. And I wanted to take a break here and stop before I got the front of the four stock towards this end, towards the muzzle, uh, worked too far down. We had a, I didn't want to have a big discrepancy between the thickness back here and up here. With that in mind, I wanted to take a, a step back and kind of jump to Bob Woodfill's The Hawk and Rifle book um, and start thinking about the reference that I want to use for this kit. Um, the CVA Hawken kit here isn't necessarily um, you know, uh, a historically accurate Hawken kit. Uh, we have a lot of brass furniture here, which we don't see in a lot of the originals. But I want to use uh, some photos of some originals and some accurate recreations to kind of inform some of these decisions, especially around our lock plate mortise here. Uh, so for this kit, I'm going to be taking a look at the, the Bridger Hawken here. It's just kind of a no-nonsense, simple, uh, original Hawken here, or uh, a recreation here by Gordon or photographed by Gordon, I should say. Um, so on the original here, we have a little bit of a, a cutoff image here as far as the lock plate mortise. 
Um, but we can see here we have uh, some more of the lock plate mortise there. And then Bob actually includes some nice photos of his recreation of the Bridger Hawk in here, where we can kind of see this lock plate mortise. And you'll notice we have kind of a, a rounded but not quite pointed uh, front mortise here. So it's kind of an, an oval, oval uh, shaped lock plate mortise there. And we have a, a point here coming off of the back. So what I wanna do before we start jumping into the, the mortise here and getting that evened up, even though we're still in the roughing stages here, I wanna set my book just off to the front here and take a look at our mortise. Uh, so our, our mortise, it's kind of hard to see, so I'm gonna outline it as, as it is now with this blue pencil. So you can see here, and we just kind of have a, a point coming out here, and then all of this wood here is what we wanna get rid of. We really wanna even out. And you can see here, we have quite a bit of a step especially on the underside of this mortise over here uh, where we have some real definition between the stock, the four stock and our mortise. So what I'm going to mark in red now is I want to round this out just a little bit. I'm really just taking off a little bit of that point there. Um, and we're going to exaggerate this point back here once we get back um, to this area. Really, we just have a little bit of wood to take off. We'll kind of sneak this up underneath here. These mortises are a little thick. So we can come in and thin those out some. My pencil marks here aren't exactly precise, but um, this is kind of using, we're just using this as a guideline. Just through my blue lid. Uh, so what I want to do now, as we're kind of shaping and, and finalizing the rough shape of this four stock and, and cleaning it up here up against the, the rib, is uh, I want to come in here with just a half round file. Uh, so I've got this, this is a made in India half round file. Um, it's a little fine for what I'm thinking here, but to get started, I've just got a half round Nicholson file here. Um, it's got a single cut and uh, it's about six inches long. This is a really utilitarian half round file size. And you can see here, it gets a lot of love and a lot of use. Uh, so that's what we're going to use here to start coming in here and cleaning this up so that we can finalize kind of the shape of our four stock. Take my file card here and clean this up a bit. So I'm using that half round, kind of coming in here and establishing that step a little bit. I don't want to go too deep because I don't want to create a divot. So once I kind of get that first line established, I'll start working it out into the rest of the four stock. I'll start working that around. Now I'll say it's tricky on this end, on this upper side to get that to smooth out. So just go a little easy and kind of work that area as you're going along. You'll see I'm kind of coming in and I take the file away, kind of rotating it as I'm going. So I'm taking that initial cut and then just kind of spreading it out as I'm doing that. So I'm kind of coming in, moving down the four stock. And that's just how I've been tackling these kind of kits and, and tackling this area on them. There are a lot of other folks out there and some real experts to, to go and learn from. Um, this is just how I'm doing it. Again, not an expert by any means. Shifting my clamp up forward so I can come back here and really work this. If you want to, we can come in with a bit of a narrower file. This kind of rat tail here. And I say rat tail, but it's more of a half round, really stubby rat tail. And I can use that point to get in there and define that more. So 
we're getting a little too straight there for my taste. Got a little too aggressive. So I'll try to just round that out. I'll touch more and kind of go from there. Now I want to grab a just a round file and just focus in on that point and get that established. Had some difficulty with the, the hardware and the barrel in there. So I just popped that all out. I've popped our lock out so we can just focus on this wood and, and get the shape a little bit closer um, without bumping into stuff all the time. So I've brought this under curve back a little bit, back just behind our first lock bolt, kind of like what we're seeing here. We have that coming through and, and fading out. We'll clean this up with a, with a flat file or a half round file to get that um, kind of bevel that we have underneath there out of there. Um, I'm working on this up here. Um, we have quite a, the distance from here to here on the mortise is uh, this kind of flat area is much greater than we see uh, in the original. And this is, this is something I'm continuing to work on. Um, because it's hard to get right, and it's harder to get right on, um, I feel like, uh, kind of working from a, as rough as a, a cutout as we are. So it's, you know, it's something where you don't necessarily have to, to focus on this, but I've kind of fixated a little bit on this area as something I want to work on and improve. So I'm kind of marking that off there a little bit. We're going to pop that tang out with that red. I'm indexing with the back of the curve back here. I'm indexing with forward on the curve with my file a little bit. So I'm kind of bring that curve back around. What's interesting about this is you can see as I'm working on that curve, my file is starting to connect up here. So I, I imagine if you drew a, a hypothetical line around this mortise, that this curve might lead you up into the rest of that mortise there. It's just kind of an artistic note. If you're working on drawing something like this on a piece of paper, you might note that as you're blocking something out. As you're kind of building the shapes that make up the shape. Coming back in here on the underside with our half round and up at an angle. Start removing some of that excess wood from the underside or the opposite side of our half round. Start evening this up with the rest of the four stock. using that half round because I get a, a really small intersection with the rest of this shape here. Now I'm not super happy just yet with the contrast um, between the mortise and the, and the stock. Um, it's, it's a pretty, it's kind of mushy as I would describe it and I'd like it to be a little sharper, especially around here. What we'll do we can come in here with our half round, kind of like this. Really work on that. Or we can come in here with a, a really small round file and clean that up. So I can kind of feel and I can see I've got a bit of a hump right in here because we have this area towards the mortise and out here that we've worked. So I'll shift back to a large flat. Kind of work that area.
Now that I'm coming in here at this large flat, because I have a cutting edge on this side, I can start to true up that contrast that I was talking about. While at the same time, smoothing out the areas around it. I'm looking at it from the side here, so my head is, is this way, looking across. Just kind of looking at all this and sighting down it, just like you would a set of sights, really. To get an idea of where you're at and where you need to go. Okay, so we've been focusing quite a lot now on, uh, on this area, this lock more that's back here. I want to pop the barrel back in so we have some strength and I want to go after this four stock and uh, you can kind of hear the difference even between those areas and I want to make sure we get those nice and even before we go much further. I can kind of see a little bit of a swoop coming in here before we get out to the four stock with the muzzle in. I'm going to get all this finished up and kind of the same pass before we do much else. Right now I've got a bit of a bowl here. We're going to focus on this area coming out here. We'll talk really quick about this extension um, and something I just just went through. I'm, I'm not super proud of, but uh, it's something that I think could be a learning moment. Um, so I wanted to keep this extension in here as I was working this so that we had an even surface from our wood across our extension um, and back over to our wood or as even as we could. We have a little bit of a bump maybe there, uh, but I'm not too concerned about that. My forward screw uh, didn't go in as far as my rear screw. And so um, I wasn't paying close enough attention. I was focused on the wood. And uh, you can see here we have a two-tone between our screw and our plate. So our plate was, was getting some file work where our screw was not. That was not the case for our front screw. And our front screw, um, I wore it down too much. And you can see here we have this little bit of a stud for what is left of that front screw. Um, I most likely just didn't drill this hole deep enough or didn't tighten it down enough and just was not paying attention to it. Um, I was able to unscrew this here um, and jiggle my extension plate enough to pull this screw out enough uh, to then grab it with some pliers and rotate it out. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're working this stuff and, and things like your nose plate. Keep an eye on those screws because you want to make sure that you can uh, get them out when you need to get them out. Uh, so there's a little learning moment that I just had and I am passing along to you. Feel free to uh, goof on me in the comments. Make fun of me a little bit. I get that. You know, I think that's well deserved, but I wanted to pass that along. Um, you know, it's just something to pay attention to. Don't just, uh, you know, I talked about early on focusing in on one section and not thinking about the whole composition. And uh, I still catch myself doing that just a little bit. I've got a little bit of a bump right here I want to take care of. I like that better. Okay, so now I want to swing back to our mortise here a little bit. Um, I've got the barrel in there still so we have some more strength. I have my clamp up here towards the, the nose cap to hold all this together. And I want to work on um, this edge here and work on getting this established back in here um, to the underside of our stock. I think to do that it would be best if we pop our trigger guard out here pop our guard out just so we're not bumping it any, into anything extra that we don't need to be. We'll put this guard back in as we continue our, our stock work because we want to get all of this nice and even to that guard. I want to do this, I want to make a note of kind of where our trigger assembly is separate from the guard here on both sides. So I want the guard in when I'm working that area and this area back here. But I want to be able to get down to our trigger plate level or our plate level in here. Um, so I'm just kind of making a note there to not go into or past that line as much as I can keep from it. I'm gently coming in here. I'm just trying to blend this out a little bit. Now, a half round probably work just as well, but I'm kind of using this still as a way to clean up that mortise. Let's shift us 
forward a bit more. Now I have um, you know some of the mistakes here on this top face of this um, lock mortise here. We're going to bring this all down of this mortise. We're going to bring it in a little bit to match up with our lock plate. Um, so I'm hoping that we can kind of even that out and crispen that up a little bit. Um, so I'm not super, super worried about how that looks right now. I'm just taking my half round, kind of coming in on the underside here. Just doing a little bit more blending as we come in here. Ouch. <laughs> Feel my thumb back. As we come in here on the underside. So you'll see in this original, or this recreation of this original back here, we have a, a pretty narrow mortise there. Um, and that's something I want to take note of and kind of work towards as we're working on this one. I've popped out our assembly underneath here so that we can focus a little bit of work on narrowing this area up on the underside of this lock mortise. Right now, looking at it kind of from the, the top down, we have a little bit of a fish belly there. I want to go after that just a touch. Now, I know we talked about just a few minutes ago the lining up our, our guard assembly down here. What I'm making a note of doing is, and I'm doing my best to, is kind of take a face to the side of that face where our guard interfaces with our stock. So I'm kind of looking at this in kind of a, a polygon sense where I have a face here and I have a face down here and then we have our center face here. So I'm trying to work just this face out here, establish our narrower mortise and then I'll work on blending that into our guard and our plate assembly down here. Coming across here on the top of our mortise getting rid of some of those burrs so we can get a better look at this. So right now I have a bit of a hump right in here. That's okay. What we'll do is we'll pop our guard back in and we'll start thinking about working that area. This is another instance too where you could have a set of working screws, you know, just some cheap hardware screws. Uh, in the same size as the screws that we're using for the guard. Uh, that way you don't worry about removing too much material on those screws. Um, but you can just kind of pay attention to and, and do your best and, and save out on, I don't know, what a couple sets of screws cost, a few bucks. Uh, it's useful to have, and I would say if you are kind of starting out, be the kind of thing to add to your add to your bench. <laughs> Now we don't have our side plate mortise on this other side taken care of at all, so I want to try to focus as much as I can on this side, just traveling over that center line uh, when I and only when I need to. I want this to be a nice curve going all the way around is what we're shooting for. And we can see that probably in... We can see a little bit what I'm, I'm talking about here in this photo where we have just a nice curve coming around our trigger guard. Now we don't have the same kind of trigger guard, but we can still get it, uh, you know, a nice even curve all the way around there with our trigger guard in there. That's the goal. We have a lot of material in this trigger guard where it's coming up into our first bow, so I'm not super concerned about coming in there and, and mucking that up a little bit with my file but i can come in here with my half round up on end and limit my interaction with that trigger guard now it doesn't give me the consistency across the flats that you might be looking for so again try to balance all of that out by altering your techniques a little bit here and there see here we have a noticeable line in a space here where we can't get to because of our file or, or of our guard here, I mean. So I'm just highlighting that in red just to visualize that a little bit more. 
Um, it's a little easier to see in the light here. That's an area we want to go into and even out and clean up. Especially with our guard out, where we can get a full stroke in there. A little bit of a ridge right there I want to take care of. There's my rough center line. You can still kind of see it in there um, with my direction of my file marks a little bit, but you can see here now we can come in with our round file a little bit, clean this up a little bit. Maybe it's not the round. Maybe we come in like this. I think it's got to be the round. Pop the guard out. I changed my mind. I want to work this other side a little bit, get at least the front of our guard on either side matching so that we can continue to work this area in unison. Okay. I feel, um, I feel okay about that. I'm going to knock down this center ridge a little bit that I've got. I'm working those two sides. I like that. I feel very good about that. I know it's, uh, it's not very obvious, it's not really easy to see, probably from your angle here, but we have, um, I'm pleased with that, I like that, that shape and that, that roundness. We'll come in here with some sandpaper as we get farther along and really smooth all this out and get it whiskered and everything. Um, but as far as where we're at now, four stock back to our lock mortise on our lock side. I feel okay about. We can come in here a little bit and blend that some. I think we'll touch on that really quick. But then on the other side, our side plate side, we'll start working on shaping that mortise out a little bit. Do we have, we, I hope we have a picture of that. Got a little bit back in here. So we still have some extra excess wood over here that we can bring in and clean that out some. So let's take Let's just take our half round. Show you what I'm thinking here with my pencil. So right coming off of here, we just have a line, a little bit of a ridge right in here. I'm gonna knock that down a little bit. Well, unfortunately, I haven't had a lot of time spent with original Hawkins. This is the kind of detail that would um, really be aided by uh, holding and feeling. You could really just run your hand across here and that would tell you everything you need to know about this area. So I'm at this point here with, with this detail, I'm more or less I'm doing what feels good and um, what I think <laughs> looks good. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm going to get to that point. Um, where it looks right, especially if I keep doing that. That's going to be it for this video. We're going to continue refining this stock now that we're kind of back into the wrist area here. We'll go through the wrist and start tackling that cheek piece. It's kind of our iconic area that's going to need a lot of work, so I'm excited to get back there and start removing some of that excess wood, getting that refined and getting that defined uh, so it's a little bit more comfortable and a little more elegant. Thank you so much for the feedback that we've received so far on this series. I'm excited to continue and get this finished up. The weather's starting to warm up here. It's teasing spring a little bit, so I'm trying to work hard and get this cranked out uh, so we can get out to the range and start having some uh, some more outdoor fun now that the weather's cooperating a little bit. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any ideas about this kit as we're going through it, please leave a comment below or shoot me an email at ilovemuzzleloading at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.